Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. You can reach Tim Ord at Ord-Oracle. O-R-C-L-E dot com. That's Ord-Oracle um, dot com. And Tim's going to be doing a workshop for all of us at TFNN, um, you know, quite, uh, quite soon. Okay, that's the bottom line. So we'll get this uh, baby going. Tim Ord, what's going on? Great. Well, thanks for having me on again. So, uh, yeah, I'm putting a seminar together. So I'm more than halfway done. So it's, Nice. Um, so we got to pick a date sometime here fairly soon. So. And we will do that. Um, That's a beautiful thing. Okay. I love it. Sure. Because right. Tim has Good. a lot of great tools, folks, that he's willing to share. So we're going to get our heads wrapped around this. Right. Okay. Let's actually start here. We're, we're going to... That one of these charts we showed last week, and I, and I want to put that chart out first, which is chart number one. Then we're going to go to chart number two. Okay. And the only reason why I'm doing this combination, there are two different charts. They show two different types of indicators, but they come out and give you approximately a, a time frame and a high price. Uh, in other words, I'll, I'll give you approximately where the – the time will, will be and, and approximately where the price will be. Uh, so you'll have price and time nice. when these two indicators are combined. So anyhow. Uh, okay, so I have the first here, chart up. I, well, actually, uh, hold it. Tell me what the first chart is you want. All right. The first chart is that uh, monthly sil silver gold ratio, which is chart one. Okay, I have that. That's I, I have it. I have the, that's the XAU, the ratio at lows, right? Is that the one? Uh, well, the middle chart is... Yeah, yeah, silver gold ratio. Okay, one second. Let me see. I have them all right in front of me. I just forget what one I did. Yeah. Yeah, I have it. Okay, good. Yes, that's the first one I have. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. This chart goes back to 1984. Yep. And I got three different indicators on it, and the, the top chart is the uh, XAU. Right. So th this is a yeah, this is a monthly chart. So okay. This is like looks at the bigger time frames. They don't give many many signals, but the signals they do give are usually really accurate. And so you always start with the bigger time frames and work backwards. So yes. anyhow, this chart goes back to 1994. I have three indicators. The bottom one is the percent B. All that does, the percent B is it basically tells you where that uh, index is in relation to the Bollinger Band. So if it's below zero, it's hitting a lower Bollinger Band. This is at 50. It's at the mid Bollinger Band, and it hits uh, above one. It's at the upper Bollinger Band, so that's what percent B is. Next one up, uh, second up from the bottom is the rate of change, and that's just a 12-day average rate of change. So it, me it measures acceleration of that index you're you're monitoring. Uh, yes. So the faster it goes, the more um, you'll get to extremes, and that's what you're trying to define. And RSI is kind of a momentum indicator too. So anyhow, I circled in red the signals that were triggered. You only need two of the three. You can have all three, but if you only have one, you don't have a signal. Okay. Uh, so, and those blue dotted lines up and down when those signals occurred. And, you know, uh, going back to, it looks like uh, oh, 1986, there was a signal uh, and that tr was triggered uh, when the uh, monthly gold silver triggered uh, the percent B, ROC, and actually RSI, so that was a buy signal, then uh, it, that index or uh, silver gold ratio went up, and the XAU went up 130%. Uh, next, yep. And here's why we really want to point out I got a red line drawn all the way across, you know, from 1984 to the current time yes. frame. We see on that. The bottom of the silver gold ratio right and i just you know i just want to point out that that's historically cheap when that ratio gets that cheap you're usually at some significant low and it happened in 1920 or uh, 2020 and it happened again in uh you know 2022 probably or, or actually 2022 of august okay so it's unusually cheap to get that to get that low so i wanted to point that out but Anyhow, I went through and, and labeled all the appreciation when those signals were trigger, triggered on the monthly gold-silver ratio. The least one was 95%, and 
and the most uh, percent gain was 383 percent. That's well, pretty cool, man. This, yeah, this uh, uh, signal was triggered was in August of last year. So, and so if you take the minimum, which is basically 100 percent, because there's only one below 100 percent, that would give a, a projection on the XAU up around 200, because it was around. Um, approximately uh, 100 back in August of last year. Right, and we're trading and so, 133 right now, folks. So that's 70 more SM, uh, XAU points, yeah, which is awesome. And remember, folks, this right. program's archived, so you can get this program if you happen to be driving in your car or whatever. You can see the visuals, you know, tonight on your program. Okay, so, Tim, go ahead. Sorry. All right, no, that's, that's fine. So anyhow, um, so that gives 100% gain. So let's now flip to the second chart. Okay. So we got a projection. On the XU, say 100, probably more, but at least 100. Yep, okay, so I have the second chart, chart up. Yeah, so this chart, the bottom window is the 18-day uh, average of the advanced decline percent for GDX. Okay. And the second window up uh, is the 18-day average of the up-down volume percent. Yes. And every time and every time these both these indicators get above 40, which are... Uh, Identified with uh, red lines, uh, you know, a vertical. I see line. them. Yep, and uh, and I call those surge patterns. Okay. So even though they got really overbought, uh, it's kind of like initiation of an uptrend. What it is, I see. And so it's, it's not the end of the move. It's it's really kind of an explosion of a move. And the last time we had it was uh, uh, October of 2021. It kind of went sideways for a while, then kind of exploded up into. Looks like about uh, early 2022. And we just had one here in April, actually, April 4th. I got them labeled there. April 4th, we had yes. uh, the bottom window was uh, 45.98, and the other one was uh, 42.36 on April 4th. So uh, then I labeled the times how long those rallies lasted. Okay. And they lasted. Um, Anywhere from at minimum six months to, uh, to re minimum three months to six months. And several of them were around four or five months. So I kind of took the average of those two, and I call it four or five months out. So they were triggered April 4th. So you expect a, uh, a high time-wise around April, around August uh, to a September time frame of this year. Won't be the final high, but it will be the high of this surge pattern. So, and the surge pattern will be kind of still straight up, even though we've been going sideways here for a week or two. You know, it, it, we haven't reached uh, the level yet. Right. It looks Bottom like a little wise. consolidation yes. we have right now. Right, right. Yeah, right. Tim, just stay so there for a second, okay? We're going to have a quick break and bring you right back, okay? Okay. So Dow right now, folks, is down 266. You got the Nasdaq up 27. S&Ps are down 10. Stay right there, man. It's Mr. Tim Ward's going to be coming back. And we're going to be slicing and dicing right now the GDX. We just did the XAU. Uh, we're coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow's down at 269. Nasdaq's up 25. S&Ps are off 10. We've got our man, Mr. Tim Ord. He is bisecting and dissecting the GDX for us right now. Okay, Tim, we're ready. All right. So anyhow, it's, um, so this is in a surge pattern, and it's supposed to last another four or five months, according to history of this type of signal. Yes. So it gives you a high around uh, the August September time frame. Now, if you go back to chart one, okay, we had a uh, uh, you know a rise. You know, all these signals on this monthly um, silver gold ratio gave at least a hundred. Well, all but one. At least a hundred percent rise from this signal. Right. Well, the signal was last August, and if you uh, you know remember Gan, you always oh yeah the anniversaries I... of highs and lows were as important. Yes. Well, this is starting to point that you know August it could be an important high or a point in date because a year ago it was a important low nice. as far as GDX is concerned because yes. that was around twenty two. But if you go back to uh, chart one again, you know, uh, I'm predicting, according to this indicator, you should go at least 100, point, uh, 100 points from the low. Well, 100 points or 100% um, from its low in August. So August of last year, uh, GDX was around 22. So if you take 100%, 
just like the XAU, you add that on, you come up with 44. You may see 44 sometime in August, September of this year, and that's also August, again, is the uh, anniversary date of its previous low. So I'm thinking August could be an important high, not a long-term high, but some sort of a timeout where you may consolidate uh, for you know a period of time. So, now, that will get interesting because uh, ne the next swing – we have is 41, and then after that, oh, look at those. Notice a beautiful swing at 45. Okay, one second. Hold on. Let's put this up. Okay, here. Let me, I'm just going to put this over here for a second. Yeah, this is cool, Tim. Okay. So I get the GDX up here. So let's see what this swing is. It's 41. Oh, this is pretty cool. Well, yeah, 40, 45 is the swing from... Uh, that's way up there, man, of 2020, which is cool. Yeah. Right, right. That's okay. That's where we're heading. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, you nice. know, and it should get, there will be other indicators uh, when we get down the road, you know, maybe a month or so from now. Yes. We'll start and look at type of signals that will indicate that we may be entering close to a high. So but yep. we don't need to worry about it right now. This, this according to GDX, is actually still cheap. If we get to 40, you know, I'm just saying 100%. Oh, no, no, I'm with you. Know, that's, that's a great thing. Exactly. I'm know, with, I, I get it. Trust me. I don't know. Right. But, oh. but I'm thinking August is going to be an important time frame. And we're up around 45 or higher. You know, we might be, be looking out uh, for that. So, anyhow, that's my projection. August high, maybe September. Nice. Probably 44 or better. Okay. You want to go to a couple other charts here? Yep. I got the third one up right now. Okay, this is, um, you know, tops have always been tough. Right. And, you know, you know, how, you know things are good, how long we can stay good. But what I found over, over the years, there's always a worrisome sign when the SP is going up and the VIX is going up with it. Yes. So when VIX goes up, it's a, it's a worrisome sign. So anyhow, this last top we had in uh, 2000, or, yeah, late, uh, yeah, late 2021, early 2022. If you notice the that I got that green shaded area. Yes. SPX was making higher highs, and the five day average, which is the bottom window of the SPX VIX ratio, was making lower highs. Okay. And so th that was uh, a warning sign that the VIX. I put it in a ratio because. Um, it just works out better. It, it kind of follows what the S and P. So you can see the divergence better. Yes. And this is a weekly time frame, not a daily time frame. Right. So this divergence started to happen back in, in you know, uh, November, December time frame, and finally January you would hit a new high, and that ratio didn't come close to this, uh, to new high. Now flip back to the next chart, chart four. Okay. We have it. And the only reason why I bring it up is just. It's more food for thought. If you go back in time, which I did all the way back to uh, 1990, whatever. But anyhow, you can see in 2020, same thing happened. You're you're hitting new highs on the S and P's uh, early 2020, and the ratio is going right, you know, straight down. Yes. Uh, so that was a huge divergence. So now let's go back to point three, to yeah. graph three again. I have it. And, uh, Okay, now we're looking where we are right now. Okay. If you notice, the S &P, this is a weekly chart. If the S&Ps right now are testing the, uh, uh, well, it looks like about January highs. That's true, yeah. If you go down to the ratio, the ratio is making higher highs than the January highs. How February cool is highs, that? Like. Okay, yeah. So what, that's a positive divergence. Right. Now, if the S&Ps were, were kind of flat, then that ratio is starting to make lower highs, you, you have to worry, but that's not what's happening here. This ratio suggests you're going to break above the current highs, which is I got around 4,200 there, 4,100 on the SPX. And the VIX is actually holding strong, is hang, hanging around 17 or lower or in that vicinity. And or the S&Ps are, are kind of holding against this previous highs. So I'm thinking uh, as of last week, even though we haven't moved, we haven't really moved at all since our last uh, show last Friday or last Thursday. My opinion: we're, we're going to break above this 4,100, 4,200, and probably head back to the old highs of 4,700. And the uh, the five-week SPX VIX ratio uh, suggests that uh, 
that to be true, I guess, because uh, that ratio is making higher highs where the S&P so far hasn't. So it's, it's just the reverse of what we're having back in January of uh, 2022, where the S&Ps were making higher highs and the uh, SPX fixed ratio is making lower highs. Here we have the opposite. S&Ps are kind of matching our previous highs. But the ratio is breaking out above its previous highs. Yes, and I'm going so to bring over a chart of what you're talking about, Tim. And it is amazing. I mean, we're, you know, if we take a look at this, you know, we've been in the same consolidation for almost a year and a half. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, the bottom line is that even you can see, you know, the, uh, we're going to have a break, folks. OK, and if you if you do, you know, watch the market intraday, you can see like even today, Tim, right? The, you know, the spread on the S&P is pretty incredible right now. And I know that, yep. you know, I mean, that's what that's what happens with consolidations, right? I mean, if we take a look at the E-minis out here today, you know, we've had, I mean, right now you're down 10, 10 points or something. But the bottom line is that we were at, we're at 18 points off the, off the low and we're, you know, 20, well, we're, yeah, we're 14 points off the high, you know, so... That's a straight out consolidation. So, you know, I can, yeah. I, I love the setup that you're giving us, man. I mean, it's pretty intense, no yeah. doubt, man. So, yeah, we're not, we're not backing away from the highs either. You know, we've been right. up here, you know, one, two, five, almost a month at this level. This is on a weekly chart. It's not like interday stuff. Yes. And we're not backing away from the highs. So, we're eating, my opinion, we're eating the supply up here. Yeah. Where we're selling, uh, there's buyers uh, stepping in. So, uh, we're going to see some energy uh, pop up here pretty quick, probably, you know, this month yet. It'll probably be to the upside. I like it. And listen, so. folks, uh, every uh, Thursday, uh, Tim's on, you know, bottom line, uh, the second and third segment. Uh, great work, Tim. You remember, folks, that this is archived. You can get it. Tim's going to be doing a workshop so you can understand how these tools work because they're phenomenal tools. Tim, thanks so much. You have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking to you next week. All right, thank you. Awesome. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.